So this is about my fourth time trying to record this video. So this video, I want to be talking about digital distribution and the upcoming end of the PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PlayStation Portable online stores. Now, in my opinion, this is very concerning. And I first heard about this story from uh, Muda of Some Ordinary Gamers and Yongya -Ya of Yongya. -Ya. So, um, if you want to know more about that, I'm just going to briefly cover of what they said in my own format. So, if you want to, just look up their channels uh, to get the full context. I just referenced them because they're a good reference point. So... The digital distribution on PlayStation. Now, considering that the PS3, uh, PlayStation Portable, and the Vitas all kind of have the pseudo same um, store, I guess, that there are some games on that digital site that are either not being published, the rights to those games to actually be redistributed, aren't there or are still kind of in limbo or three because you know they never decided to port it now in my opinion the playstation one had so many games on it that some of which were not ported to other consoles like for example the original resident evil trilogy like re1 re2 and re3 now, RE1, now, they all had their remakes, like RE1 in 2002, and then was brought into the modern gaming sphere um, in 2014, I believe, 2015, on pretty much everything under the sun at that point, and was even brought to Switch a few years ago. I think 2017, 2018, along with 4, 5, and 6 on the Switch. And... The one thing that concerns me is that the original PlayStation uh, Resident Evil trilogy never got ports to anything outside of that. Well, okay, they did have ports outside of it, but were not brought into the modern sphere. Now, for example, Resident Evil 1 had a Sega Saturn launch and a Windows 95 launch alongside the PlayStation 1. It has not gone anywhere since those times, and for and then was brought on the PlayStation Three uh, about two thousand eight, two thousand nine, uh, roughly before the twenty tens happened. So there's that problem, and now with Resident Evil Two and Three Classic, they were brought onto the Nintendo GameCube, alongside with the remake of One, RE Zero, and RE Four. And those are really hard to find. Now, Resident Evil 2 had the PlayStation 1 launch, a Nintendo 64 launch, and a Windows 95 launch. I know there's others. I can't remember them off the top of my head. And, the and of course, PlayStation 3 a few years later. About roughly a decade or so later. And then same with Resident Evil 3. Now, Resident Evil 3 Classic was only on PlayStation 1... Windows 95 and GameCube, to my knowledge. Now, it was probably ported to other systems. And then, of course, PlayStation 3, uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. Now, this concerns me considering that once the PlayStation Store for the PlayStation 3, Vita, and Portable are dead, you cannot legitimately get those anymore. You'll have to buy them secondhand off eBay or... Hope you still have the original physical copies. Now, <coughs> another series would also be, in my personal opinion, would be the Legacy of Kane series. Now, the first two, Blood Omen and Soul Reaver, were on the PlayStation 1, but they had other ports. Now, Soul Reaver was also on the Sega Dreamcast, which was, in my opinion, one of the better ports of it, and also on PC, which you can still buy on GOG and Steam. I'm not shilling for the game. It's just I fucking love that franchise. Now, Blood Omen was only on the PlayStation 1 and the PC vert, and on PC, but it only had a physical PC copy because Steam really wasn't a thing around 1990. 7, 1998 
And while, yes, Soul Reaver 1 and Blood Omen 1 were ported to the PlayStation 3 stores a few years after. Now, what's interesting is that Activision has the rights to publish Blood Omen 1 on PC, but have yet to relinquish those rights. And that's really saddening, because Blood Omen 1, while, yes, it is very archaic and is about 25 years old... Same with Resident Evil, now that I think about it. When the online store for a PlayStation goes out, you legitimately cannot buy the game. You cannot legitimately buy the game from the developers, which I think on the PlayStation store, I think Crystal Dynamics or Ido Software still has the rights to, for Blood Omen 1. Now, yes, you can emulate it, but... Now, again... I'm all for emulation if there is no way you can do anything anymore. Now, consoles and games will fade away and die. Now, it, again, supply and demand. Uh, God, I sound like an economics class, but that's how this shit works. With the supply, you know, it's there. And for the demand, the supply on digitally will keep the demand satisfied. But once the digital runs out, people will flock to eBay and buy as many copies as they can to jack up the price and thus gain a profit on a game that is, like, almost three decades old. Fucking shit. And that same is going to happen with the original Resident Evil trilogy and a lot of other games that were only on the PlayStation 1 and never really to have ports or remakes. Or remasters. That were good. Resident Evil 3. But that's still another thing, though, of if things get remastered and or ported to other consoles of what would get lost. Now, remakes can be done right, a lot like the Resident Evil 1 remake in 02 showed. You can remake a game, still have the same stuff in there, but a lot more, and kind of take out the things that kind of weren't all that good. But other than that, yeah, there's no legitimate way to play the original versions again. Unless you emulate, have the physical copy, it's not scratched or broken, and you still have official software to play it on, and a bunch of other shit. And then emulation, if it really comes down to it. And that's how it's going to be. Or just get lucky and find it for a cheap price off of eBay. Now, the thing that pisses me off with having to buy things secondhand is that you don't know if you're going to get, you know, the exact thing. Or if you're just going to get fucked. And by that, I mean not the good kind of fucked unless you buy a flashlight. Or some other weird shit. We're not talking about that this video. I want this to be monetized. Even though at time of recording I don't have monetization. So yeah. That's kind of uh. Yeah I kind of don't want to get into that. I kind of want this video to be seen by people. Anyways moving on. So. With that. eBay is pretty much just gambling on it. Now, if it's ported to other systems or is still on PC, you know, you will still have access to buy it and play it. But it's a double-edged sword or a two-sided coin if we're talking about Legacy of Kane. I fucking love that series. I might play it on stream one day. One day. If I can actually get it fucking running. But I digress. On one side you still have the physical copy, but have to play it on older hardware, which, yes, older hardware will last for a good long time. Like, record players are still being made today, same with vinyls and things of that nature. And CD players, while still kind of slowly being phased out, are still prevalent, and people still buy CDs to this day, me included. Now, cassette tapes are pretty much a dying breed at this point. Well, yes, some niche bands and some underground bands and indie bands and pretty much anyone that's not mainstream unless they want to seem pretentious 
will still put things out on cassette tapes. Now, in my opinion, cassette tapes are just kind of fun. I don't know why I still fucking enjoy them. But, then again, I'm just a sucker for old technology. But if you don't have official hardware and the way to get those items again digitally on current hardware will get harder and harder as the years go on. Now, I want to introduce uh, games that were on Steam, but if you still bought them, you could still play them, but you can't buy it anymore. For one example, I have Mortal Kombat 9 on Steam. Yet, while if you did buy it, you cannot buy it again. You can still download it and play it, but the online is still kind of dead. Because the servers were shut down. And that also has another thing with online servers getting more and more pricier to keep and maintain for years on end. Now, some games will still do this till pretty much the day they... So pretty much the day the world ends or until something like Y2K happens, which knowing how technology has evolved, Y2K might seem more prevalent these days than it did back in 1999. Again, I know a lot of old shit. So, <laughs> other than that, you know, unfortunate dystopian nightmare... Well, some games are still being ported to this day and played on modern systems like Doom, for example. Doom 1, Doom 2, and now even Doom 3 are being ported and played on current gen systems. Like, I can go and grab my Switch and download the original two Dooms and Doom 3, I think, and Doom 64, and pretty much the entire Doom series now that I think about it because Doom Eternal is now on Switch. God, I want to put my Switch through the grinder with that game, but... Kind of busy playing Persona 5 Strikers at the moment. That's another series that should have ports and remakes. It's the Persona series. Well, Persona 1 and 2... Now, they're really harder to f hard to find, considering that Persona 1 and 2 were only on the PlayStation 1. While P1 did get a PC port and were on the PSP, they were just kind of Americanized. In a very weird fucking way. Now then, Persona 3 and Persona 3 Fez and Persona 3 Portable, those are going to get... The, ugh, fuck me. Those are going to get a lot harder to find, considering that I don't know if there's any good emulations left of those games. And considering that the original softwares for those games and to get them legitimately are getting a bit harder, especially P3 Portable, considering that's more of a gem, I guess, considering that, you know, you see it pretty much the same game, but completely mirrored. And then Persona 4 Golden was put on Steam for some weird fucking reason. I ain't arguing. Please put more Persona games on Steam Atlas, please. Please. You already put P4 Golden and P5 Strikers on there. There's more. And I think even Shin Megami Tensei 3 is actually coming to Steam. Yeah, it is coming to Steam. And PS4 and Nintendo Switch. Even though they were already out on Switch and PS4 over in the East... They're now finally getting localized to Japan in the West, and I really hope the Dante back in SMT3 is voiced by Ruben Langdon. Not whoever they got for Dante in Devil May Cry 2. Devil May Cry 2 sucks. I don't know why people still want to play that game. I hate that game. A lot of people hate that game. Even the creators of Devil May Cry 2 hate that fucking game. And I still prefer Reboot over Devil May Cry 2, so suck my dick. Anyways, moving on from getting flamed in the comments below. So, what does all this mean with PlayStation shutting down server, shutting down the stores of the PS3, Portable, and Vita? Since they were introduced in 2007, and they've lasted 14 years. 14 fucking years. And that is impressive, but it also comes at a cost, considering there are some exclusive games that while yes some are playable on the playstation now like resident evil code veronica x and metal gear solid 4 
What about when those servers for the PS4 go out and they're not ported or on Steam or anywhere else? You will have to buy them on older hardware and hope they still work. Now, this is a more terrifying concept to theorize, considering that once all the physical stuff goes out and once you can't buy it digitally, piracy is going to increase and emulations are going to go up higher and higher. Now, I am all for emulation. When there is no necessary means to get it physically or legitimately anymore. Which is why I've kind of... I'm kind of starting to go, wanting to go out of my way to download Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Considering there's no official PC port that you can readily buy unless you get lucky off eBay. Or at a yard sale. Or find someone who has it and borrow it from them and move and never come back. I'm not saying that's happened to me. I'm just saying I just know because that's something I've pretty sure would have expected something to happen i'm not advising that unless you're a horrible person and i'm not so much of a horrible person i may hate the world and a lot of things in it but i'm not that terrible of a person oh dear god what the fuck am i saying i really wish i knew how to edit so i can edit this part out anyways moving on so emulation is necessary and is good if there is no way possible left Considering now, back to Blood Omen. Since Activision still holds the rights to publish it on PC, and they're pretty much doing nothing but just have it in a vault and will never bring it out. Unless someone buys the rights, which Activision more or less won't do. And that's the one thing with remasters and ports. Is that if you remaster a game... Now, say for example, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. It is still on Steam, as of now that I think about it, and it is still being played, and it is not hacked to fuck, like original Modern Warfare is on PS3 and 360. Uh, Steam has dedicated servers, so I don't think I'd need to worry about that. But here's another thing, with this happening, what's going to happen to other uh, services, like Nintendo, for example, they already did it with the Wii and I think the Wii U. What if they do it for the Switch? When if they do it for the Switch? Now, Xbox, in my opinion, has done it better. Now, I don't know about original Xbox Live, considering I don't know if there's actually things on the original Xbox Live that you could buy. I don't know. I wasn't a part of that era, unfortunately. That was more for PS2. So... With the Xbox 360, a lot of things there are still readily available to purchase. And will more than likely still be available to purchase due to backwards compatibility. Which is something that Sony has kind of faltered with after the PS4. Now, they did somewhat remedy this with PlayStation Now. Considering you could play some PS2 games and some PS3 games. Not the entire catalog. Now, Xbox is doing something similar with this, but to a much better extent. Now, considering that you kind of have to take a gamble of what's there or not, but there's a more than wide selection of backwards compatible titles and are still being readily made available for backwards compatibility. And this is still good, considering that some older games from the 360 are still getting ported and backwards compatible. I mean, hell, even some Xbox Classic games are backwards compatible, like Knights of the Old Republic 1 and I think KOTOR 2. I'm not sure on that one. I know KOTOR 1 definitely is. And Star Wars Republic Commando. Some A lot of the Star Wars games, actually, now that I think about it, and pretty much a lot of LucasArts games. And... Some of Bethesda's older games, like, I think, Elder Scrolls 3, uh, Morrowind, I think that's what it is. But definitely a lot of, like, first-party, um, Xbox games. I don't know if the original Halos are. But then again, considering that the Master Chief Collection kind of exists, that's kind of a moot point. 
But still, what does this mean for digital distribution in the future? Well, yes, some games and some game add-ons are taken off of PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, Nintendo, pretty much anything. Sometimes even entire games get removed. Like Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation, for example. That's not coming back. Xbox even has a fucking warning on it. If like, warning, this game ain't what it's cracked up to be. PC, on the other hand... I'm a bit of a PC elitist, so, yeah, uh, PC's just like, just, uh, be prepared, okay? Some fucky shit's gonna happen. I've had some fucky shit go on. Like, in my first stream I did back in December when I had my car crash into a wall, flip upside down, and blow up, and then another time my car just kind of phased through the earth. That game is a clusterfuck, and I fucking love it. Then again, New Vegas is, and I'm probably going to be streaming New Vegas as soon as this video goes up, so if not, so if you just watched this, um, yeah, join me for New Vegas shenanigans. We're going to be doing some righteous work, and I'm just going to continue playing through Honest Hearts. Maybe Lonesome Road. Maybe some vanilla stuff. Maybe kill the Brotherhood of Seal, but I really don't want to! Considering I've worked so fucking hard to get the Brotherhood to fucking like me. That stupid fucking PC quest where you have to isolate that fucking virus. It's just... Oh, I hated that quest so much. Who have Sinian thought that was a good idea was a fucking idiot. Oh, but I digress before this goes on to about be a half hour long. So... Anyways, short story, PlayStation stores shutting down, not good, considering there's a lot of old PS1 games and some PSP games you can't really find without looking or getting lucky on eBay, and some PS2 titles and PlayStation 3 DLCs. So, once the store goes out, all of that is getting erased. You can't redeem vouchers anymore, you can't do anything anything anymore now you can still download those games as soon as you buy them and you still re-download them but that's also another point when will the download period end that's another thing to be concerned about is when does the download period end that is something that scares me too considering i used to be a playstation fanboy Right, I had a PS2 growing up. I also got the PS3. Then over, then a few years after, I got the Xbox 360. Best decision I've ever made. Then I got the PS4 when that came out. And then I got the Xbox uh, One about a year or so later. And once supply is readily available and I am actually financially stable, getting a Series X. But, you know... PC is going to last me for fucking ever. Because I don't have to buy a, like, a new computer every seven years. Or six or ten, depending. So, yeah. And plus, with some exclusives being, you know, only for those systems. Like, like I said, Metal Gear Solid 4. And also the, f the first two Injustice games. Inju or not Injustice, fuck. Infamous. With Infamous 1 and Infamous 2... Being only for the PlayStation. Now, yes, you can still play those on PlayStation now on the PS4. And I think the PS5, I'm not sure about that. If someone has a PS5, let me know in the comments down below. But, yeah, that's another thing. I fear this will be a trend continuing on. Now, Xbox does, you know, still keeps their services up. But with the Xbox 360, it's kind of getting a little bit more and more harder but some of it is still going to be more readily available considering, you know, backwards compatibility on the Xbox One and the Series X, I think. I'm not sure about that. But also with some DLCs actually going free, like uh, the map packs in Halo 3, Reach, and 4, I think. I'm not entirely sure about that, but they go free. So, there's all of that. But... 
The bad part is, when does it all end? And with the servers of the Xbox 360 Halos, like Halo 3, ODST, Reach, Halo Wars 1, and Halo 4, all of those are going to be gone by December. And that's terrifying, but makes sense because the Master Chief Collection does exist and still offers all of that while well, some stuff is still kind of cut out while well, some stuff is kind of added in like more armors for halo 3 which still pisses me off but then again i'm not a p then i'm ugh, fuck me then, then again i'm not a halo 3 elitist well sometimes yes the additions are good like some of the cut armors like the um, the helmet, the cut helmet from Halo Reach, which was gonna be in the first DLC of Halo Reach. I forget which one it was. Um, you'll know it when I'm, you'll know it if you look it up. And, you know, some more armors and things for also Reach. Halo 3 kinda, ugh. in my opinion, didn't do it that right but then again it was halo online and halo online was actually really fucking fun from what i've heard i've never played it unfortunately then halo master chief collections i had released on steam for no apparent reason other than to make the pc elitists happy and i'm happy too as soon as they introduce cross play which i think they do actually now that i think about it and also, if I if I buy it on Steam, if I can still keep all my shit. Because, you know, I had to work hard for all my Reach armor. And I've worked way too long and way too hard to have to regain all of that armor and all some of the exclusive shit I can't get anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be hell. So, yeah. Um... Again, reiterating, PlayStation Network, or PlayStation Store for the PS3, Vita, and Portable going down is a bad omen, and might continue, considering there are some PS1 games and PS2 games that have never been ported, or are really hard to find. And it's really hard to play on modern systems. And I fear for this being the case, considering that other companies will follow suit. Well, yes, some will die out considering that sometimes the servers are a bit too hard to maintain and aren't as populated as they were back in their heydays. But <clears throat> I digress on that issue. So that's the short of it of PlayStation Store going down for the older systems. Other consoles will follow suit. I'm terrified of that without and piracy is good if done necessarily. Anyways, that's all for this right now. As soon as this video is done uploading, I'm hopefully going to be streaming Fallout New Vegas right here on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll see you all on that stream if my internet doesn't fucking crash a thousand goddamn times. See you later.